I must admit, I was a little bit disappointed with the initial images I was getting out of my Canon R7. And that really didn't come down to anything to do with the camera body itself. It really came down to the kit lens. And I think the kit lens is okay as far as a sort of inexpensive, versatile, lightweight lens that can kind of do everything for you. But it is limited in a number of ways, and one is it doesn't really allow you to get a very shallow depth of field, sort of where you've got your sharp and detailed subject and the background blown out and blurry. It's also pretty poor in low light conditions. I also find when you do get a little bit of background blur, it's not sort of quite as pleasing or as beautiful as it could be. And with this 32 megapixel sensor, you're also not getting enough detail to fully resolve the 32 megapixels on this sensor. So you, you aren't really making the most of the sensor itself. And recently a company sent out to me a full frame RF cinema lens, which I was supposed to test on my full frame cameras, but just for the heck of it, I threw it on the R7 just to see what things looked like. And I think that was like a week or 10 days ago, and I haven't taken the lens off since. The images that I'm getting out of this are night and day different compared to the kit lens, and they have just an absolutely magic quality. Now, a few things you need to know about this lens and sort of cinema lenses in general is the first thing is it is designed to be used for video making. Now, you can still use it for still photography, and my favorite still photos that I've taken with this camera so far have come with this lens. But when it is designed, it is designed in mind to use it for video. The second with some cinema lenses and specifically this cinema lens is it gives kind of a very certain look. There seems to be, I don't know, maybe more of a focus on how good the quality of the background blur is. And because of that, you get a almost like a cross between a vintage lens and a modern lens as far as what the images, uh, the way that they are rendered and the way that the color is and the way the highlight fall off is. It is kind of a unique image. Now, this may be something you like or don't like. For me, I just threw this on the camera and I started taking some photos, shooting some video. And at the time I just had the camera in completely automatic mode. And I was just blown away by the quality of the images I was getting. And all the samples you're gonna to see today, I, I didn't do any editing whatsoever. These are JPEG straight out of camera and these are video straight out of camera. Most of the time in the automatic mode, but sometimes I've got them in the neutral picture profile mode. But it almost seems like it didn't matter what I did. I just got this sort of beautiful look. But I will say that this look is likely a little bit different than you're gonna be used to getting out of sort of a modern mirrorless lens. The other thing about this lens is this is a full frame lens, which kind of has an advantage in the fact that you can use it on the Canon R7 and you've got sort of a crop sensor image. You're only using the center part of that lens. But if at some point in the future you upgrade to a full frame camera or you already have a full frame camera, this is going to allow you to use this lens on the full frame camera and the crop sensor camera. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna kinda turn this lens into two lenses in one. So this is an 85 millimeter focal length. So you're gonna get that times 1.6 times on the crop sensor, and then you use it on a full frame camera, you're going to get the standard 85 millimeter field of view. So that creates some versatility that you don't necessarily get in a sort of a crop sensor lens or even a crop sensor cinema lens. So I think there is an advantage there to this sort of full frame lens. The other thing I will say is some full frame lenses don't seem to be able to resolve the 32 megapixels that this camera puts through the center of those lenses. I'm not 100% sure whether this lens does or not, but I can certainly say it resolves far more detail than what you're getting out of the kit lens. So you put these two side by side, the kit lens versus the uh, cinema lens, and what you're gonna find is you're getting way more detail and you're at least using a lot more of the capability of that sensor, of that 32.5 megapixel sensor, if you're shooting with this cinema lens. The other thing that's really important to know is this is a fully manual aperture and manual focus lens. Now this is the way cinema lenses are in Hollywood. They are essentially all manual focus. They are essentially all manual aperture. And as part of that, they have this kind of unusual gearing system that you will see on the side of the lens. And you've got this really well dampened focus and aperture ring or adjustment ring. And you can do it by hand and all the video you've seen today or I'm throwing up in this video, they were all manual focus photos. They were all manual focus videos. So 
This is what you're going to get with using the manual focus. But these gears on the side of the lens are actually designed so you can put a follow focus system that attaches to the lens. This allows you to actually change your focus or change your aperture either remotely with sort of a unit that has a wireless thing that allows you to change it, or mechanically, which will sort of hook onto the side of the camera and you'll get a big knob that you can kind of adjust your focus or you adjust your aperture in and out. So. That is something that is quite unusual. Once again, you don't have to use it that way. I just used it by hand, but you do have that capability and it explains why there is this strange gear thing on the side of the lens if you haven't used a cinema lens before. The other thing I will say is the focus is a 270 degree throw, which is actually quite long compared to sort of a, a sort of normal manual focus lens. So at times you will find yourself having to go a couple of times. That can make focus throws from objects that are far away to close away, sort of quite difficult to do smoothly, particularly if you're shooting video. And that's where the value of some sort of follow focus system that hooks up can come into play. But as I said, all the videos you're seeing today or you see in this video, I have just done by hand. So you're perfectly capable of doing it, but just be aware it is a very long throw on that focus throw. Now, looking at the sharpness and the detail that you're getting from the photos and the videos, first of all, it blows away anything you're getting out of the kit lens. It's sort of not even close. There's far more detail on the photos. You're getting far more use of those 32 and a half megapixels in a way that you're just not even remotely touching with the kit lens. And it's obviously more than enough for that downsampled 4K footage. So you are definitely getting the full maximum resolution you can get out of that 4K image. I think a 4K image is only around eight megapixels. So that's not really that hard hard to do, but you're definitely taking full advantage of that downsampled 4K when you're sort of using the cinema lens in a way that you might not necessarily be doing if you're using the kit lens. One of the most important things you're going to see out of these images is the color and contrast is different than what you're getting with the kit lens. I would say it looks like it's slightly lower contrast, it has slightly sort of smoother highlight fall off, so a roll off, you sort of get this really smooth image but you don't you lose detail. This is really important. So you get this little bit of a vintage lens, smooth Hollywood feel. But if you take a photo with the 32 and a half megapixel sensor and you crop into somebody's sort of eyelashes or eyes, all the details there, you're not losing any detail, which is something that I really haven't seen in a lens so far. I've always liked that kind of sort of little bit lower contrast, a little bit more filmic look but generally those lenses also cause you to lose detail, which in this lens I'm finding you're not losing any detail at all. All the detail is there, and in fact, far more detail than you're getting out of the kit lens. And one of the biggest differences between this lens and a lot of other lenses that I have tested in general on all camera systems is the quality of the background blur. I am super impressed with how smooth and beautiful and what sort of backdrop this lens creates with its background blur. Now, a lot of modern lenses sort of work so hard to get the most contrast and the most detail and then the most information that they do that at the sacrifice of the quality of that background blur. Now, this is pretty important because when you are using sort of shallow depth of field, whether it be in photo or video, most of the image that you're looking at is out of focus. Only a small amount of the image is actually in focus. So that being the case, having high quality background blur is potentially even more important than the sharpness of the image in the middle. And this lens does a great job of giving you both. So you get a very, very smooth and clean background blur, which creates a really nice backdrop for your sort of image that's in focus in the sort of center of frame or wherever you, wherever you have positioned it. But it also gives you all of that detail. So you're not losing detail, but you're still getting that creamy background blur. And there are only two negative issues that I can point to when using this lens with the Canon R7. And the first thing is that you get a little bit of chromatic aberration if you get sort of backlighting on a subject. Now that's only when you've got the lens wide open. When you stop it down a little bit, it's fine, it goes away. And when it is there, it is very, very mild or very, very modest. But I just thought I would mention it, just a little bit of chromatic aberration in certain situations. The other thing is actually about the Canon R7 itself. Currently with the Canon R7 and manual lenses like this, there are some issues with the IBIS system. Now, when you put a manual lens on the Canon R7 and you go in to turn the IBIS on, it will ask you what focal length the lens is because the lens isn't talking to the body, so the body doesn't know what focal length it should be trying to compensate and move the image around and keep stable. So the focal length is what the camera needs to know to know how to move that IBIS to keep the image stable. 
For whatever reason, this function is not fully working on the Canon R7 right now, meaning that if you shoot with a lens that tells the camera body that it's at 85 millimeters, it's actually quite a stable IBIS system. When you manually tell the camera what the focal length is, which is what it asks you to do and the way it's designed to do, the image isn't quite as steady. Now, it's still a little bit more steady than using it without the IBIS, but it's not as steady as it should be. And I put a call into Canon to try to find out if they're going to resolve this with a firmware update or if it's a known issue. And that was about a week ago and I haven't heard back, so I do have to follow that up. And I will put an update about this in a video on the channel all about this issue. But I kind of think that we should see Canon sorting this out. This really only affects the video footage. It seems to work better in photo for whatever reason, but just something to be aware of. And if you're interested in getting the most out of your Canon R7, I'm doing a whole series of videos about this camera and the compatible lenses on this channel. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell notification.